Hello everyone, my name is Viam and finally we are stepping into a new season of CORE, the show that allows us to question our reality. In season 3, we will explore the world of education and try to understand what we've been doing in this field so far to determine how we can improve the field of education and advance our civilization to its fullest potential in the 21st century. In this episode, we will uncover the different types of intelligences. When I was younger, I was obsessed with IQ, which is what we were taught in school was a good measure of intelligence. I remember doing one of these tests and getting an average of 145 and thinking to myself, I'm a genius. That's what the book says. This is sadly how most of the educational systems still run to this day. And this textbook definition of smart is not all there is, despite it being obviously something impressive to have. Shout out to Rabir. Before we get started, if you guys are new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe as I make new videos every week. For today's episode, if you haven't noticed already, I want to do something slightly different and explain to you the different types of intelligences using examples from my personal life. I went scouring the internet for videos of friends and family. And yes, I do plan to embarrass you. <laughs> but it's honestly not my fault that Facebook made it so easy to scavenger for these videos. Before we go forward, if you are not mentioned here, please know that I couldn't find your video. I really tried to make sure everyone is mentioned, but unfortunately that's not possible. So please know that I thought of you all and in the future, make sure to publish more videos so that I can find them and embarrass you. Also, if any of you are offended by this, please let me know and I'll take your information from this video. But I do hope you all take it lightly. I only meant well with this. Now, without further ado, let's get started. In 2011, I attended a neo-humanist education course about creativity that was presented by Didi Ananda Rama at Smart Academy in Lebanon. This was my introduction to Howard Gardner's viewpoint on intelligence. In 1983, this developmental psychologist described nine types of intelligences. He defined intelligence by the ability to solve problems that are encountered in real life, the ability to generate new problems to solve, and the ability to make something or offer a service that is valued within one's culture. This new understanding of intelligence beholds the notion that not all will be great artists, scientists, or writers, but all human beings can be enriched by developing many kinds of intelligences to the greatest extent possible. When individuals have opportunity to learn through their strength, unexpected and positive cognitive emotional social, and even physical changes appear. The ability to evolve one's intelligence as a person was beautifully described in Dr. Joe Dispenza's book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, which you guys can find on my website, by the way. Now let's quickly explore what these nine intelligences are. The first of the nine is bodily kinesthetic intelligence, which is the capacity to manipulate objects and use a variety of physical skills. This intelligence also involves a sense of timing and the perfection of skills through mind-body union. Athletes, dancers, surgeons, and even craftspeople exhibit well-developed bodily kinesthetic intelligence. In Western societies, physical skills are not as highly valued as cognitive ones. And yet, elsewhere, the ability to use one's body is a necessity for survival, as well as an important feature of many prestigious roles. The second intelligence to examine is linguistic intelligence, which is the ability to think in words and to use the language to express and appreciate complex meaning. This intelligence allows us to understand the order and meaning of words and to apply metalinguistic skills to reflect on our use of language. Linguistic intelligence is the most widely shared human competence and is evident in poets, novelists, journalists, and effective public speakers. In the example sharing here, Evelyn is demonstrating someone who is multilingual. Being able to learn multiple languages and even imitate accents is a form of high linguistic intelligence. Arigato. 
The third form of intelligence is intrapersonal intelligence. The word intrapersonal means turning inside. So intrapersonal intelligence is the capacity to understand oneself and one's thoughts and feelings and to use such knowledge in planning and directioning one's life. Intrapersonal intelligence involves not only an appreciation of the self, but also of the human condition. And people who have it can discern where they are in life, what obstacles they have around them, and what their motivational state is like. This intelligence is very important nowadays because so many of us have to make their own decisions about where to work, with whom to work, what to study, and what not to spend time on. And if you don't have good knowledge of yourself, you are going to make a lot of unnecessary mistakes. This type of intelligence is very evident in spiritual leaders, psychologists, educational developers, and writers as well. The fourth intelligence is spatial intelligence, which is the ability to think and navigate in three dimensions. Pilots, sailors, sculptors, painters, engineers, and even architects all exhibit high spatial intelligence. Core capacities include mental imagery, spatial reasoning, image manipulation, graphic and artistic skills, and an active imagination. The fifth intelligence is the naturalist intelligence which designates the human ability to differentiate among living things, whether it's plants or animals, as well as sensitivity to other features of the natural world, like clouds or rock configurations. Skilled naturalists include farmers, shepherds, landscapers, botanists, ecologists, biologists, and zoologists. Yikes, too many ists. Okay, now moving to the sixth intelligence on the list, which is musical intelligence. This one's pretty self-explanatory. It is the capacity to discern pitch, rhythm, timbre, and tone. This intelligence enables us to recognize, create, reproduce, and reflect on music as demonstrated by composers, conductors, musicians, vocalists, and sensitive listeners. Interestingly, there is often an effective connection between music and the emotions. And the mathematical and musical intelligences may also share common thinking processes. It won't be complete to talk about musical intelligence without a quick demonstration. <laughs> Now the seventh intelligence is logical mathematical intelligence, which is the ability to calculate, quantify, consider propositions and hypotheses, and carry out complex mathematical operations. It enables us to perceive relationships and connections and to use abstract symbolic thought, sequential reasoning, and inductive and deductive thinking patterns. Logical intelligence is usually well-developed in mathematicians, scientists, and engineers. These people thrive on problem-solving, and technical knowledge is very easy to grasp by them. A good indication of this intelligence is the IQ test. And as the examples here show, these people with higher IQs are very respected in society because of their ability to reshape our lives and their skills are seen as essential in our current highly technological society. The eighth type of intelligence is the existential intelligence. This intelligence means the sensitivity and capacity to tackle deep questions about human existence, such as the meaning of life, who are we, what is love, why do we fight, where are we headed, and how did we get here? This type of intelligence is evident in theologians and philosophers, as well as channelers and spiritual guides. The last of the nine intelligences is interpersonal intelligence, 
which is the ability to understand and interact effectively with others. It involves effective verbal and nonverbal communication to maintain social relations, the ability to note distinctions among others, sensitivity to the moods and temperaments of others, and the ability to entertain multiple perspectives. Interpersonally intelligent people naturally participate in collaborative efforts and assume various roles of leadership. After we examined all the nine different types of intelligences, I want to remind you that this is just a theory, and it definitely lacks other types of intelligences, including nurturing intelligence, which is something that most parents would learn throughout their journey to becoming parents, pedagogical intelligence, or teaching intelligence, which is something that is developed by many teachers and educators, cooking intelligence, and perhaps some more sinister intelligences like manipulation intelligence. I'm not going to give examples of that one. Gardner's book is still considered controversial by some, despite his various scientific tests, which you can find more information about on his website, which I linked below in the description, along with all the socials of my friends and family members that I've mentioned in this video. One important thing to note is that all intelligences are malleable. Some come naturally and others need to be learned. So nobody is incapable of not developing a specific intelligence. However, some people do have a harder time learning due to the limited educational techniques available. In other words, if you are not good at math or let's say music, with the right educational tools and teaching methods, you too can learn to develop these intelligences. Each person has a different neural network that learns these intelligences differently. It was even shown that when you remove one half of a person's brain due to injury, the person can redistribute their intelligence among the other half. We will discuss that topic of brain plasticity in another season. However, for now, just know that you're not dumb in anything you just haven't found the right method that suits you to learn it properly. I will end this video with a TEDx-like talk that my friend Lama Jodie had spoken last year in AUB. Make sure to like this video and share it with your friends as they too need to learn that they're special. On that note, see you next week. I discovered I was half blind when I was eight. I learned how to read when I was 12. With every time I was told I'm not smart enough, I hunched more with burdens. With every time I was told, I am too late, I crippled with anger. With every time I was told, I won't make it, I was shut down with sadness. Since I was a little girl, I have seen my intelligence is not in scientific analysis or mathematical equations. It is in listening, in observing, in believing. I have learned to listen to people's ideas and expand my perception. I have learned to observe people's actions before their words. I have learned to believe in the gifts that God has given me. With my disabilities, I have found different types of abilities. And so I have found strength in the very same thing that held me back for years. I am unique and I am different. And as difficult as it is to be this way, as much as it gives me and people like me the freedom to excel beyond the frame that the society places us in. Sir Robinson, a professor of education in the UK, thinks we are all born creative until we are educated out of it. So here I understand that my inner genius is my ability to be creative. Each and every one of us is some type of genius. And I say, it is up to you to accept who you are. Look at what you got and find out your true genius. At the end of the day, the story that you tell yourself about yourself is what really matters. So I ask you, profoundly, what do you tell yourself about yourself? Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and let's question reality together.